Hello everyone, I'm Dr. Alaa Musbah, Professor of Obstetrics and Gynecology Faculty of Medicine at Mansoura University. Today we are going to discuss some MSQ questions in obstetrics. So what about the multiple choice questions? Okay, so first you should remember that we choose the one best response or the most correct answer. That's mean we may found we may find more than one or two answer or three answer blocks that they are correct. However, there is one best response. Okay. Okay. The second important thing I want to tell you that sometimes the question is straightforward, so just answer it easy like that don't be confused because it is an easy question okay some questions depend on knowledge some questions depend on recalling thinking some questions need analysis some questions need to be creative so there is different skills in MSQ questions either recall or thinking or analysis or creation okay so let us start with the first question which of the following is a complication of third stage of labor associated with forced placental separation endometritis uterine atony asherman syndrome or uterine inversion what is the best response Please, when you read the stem, this, this upper part is called the stem. And these are the distractors. Distractors may be four or five. Of course, with the increasing number of distractors, the probability of choosing by luck is more difficult. Okay? So, usually, they are four or five. So, try to think... To find the best response okay in this time you will find some keywords like complication like sort of stage flipper like associated okay with forced placenta separation okay so endometritis may happen but at late it is a late complication and also the Asherman syndrome but what may be associated with forced placental separation is really the uterine inversion so the one best response here is uterine inversion let us go to the another question what is the half-life of oxytocin oxytocin has a half-life few minutes so let us see the distractors. Five minutes, 30 minutes, three hours, two days. So what is the one best response is five minutes. It ranges really between five, one to six minutes. So it is around five minutes. So the one best response here is five minutes. Go to the next question. What is the serious potential complication of prolonged oxytocin administration? DIC, water intoxication, myometrial necrosis, hyperkalemia. So, what is the one best response? Let us see the answer. The answer is water intoxication. Yes. With prolonged use of oxytocin over 24 hours, water intoxication may happen and it is dangerous because it may cause convulsion and the coma. Go to the next question. Which of the following is associated with ergonobin and the missile ergonobin, which is the ergometrin? Caesar. 
hypertension, oliguria, or thrombocytopenia? The answer is hypertension. Yes. It is associated with ergometrin or ergonovin. That's why in patient with hypertension with pregnancy, we try to avoid use of ergometrin after delivery of the baby. Okay? We are using oxytocin infusion better than using ergonovine or missile ergonovine because of association of hypertension okay let us go to the next question what are the major advantage of mediolateral obesity easy surgical repair less post-operative pain fewer third degree extension less blood loss I think it is a very easy question because we know that mediolateral epizotomy has a fewer third degree extension and this is one of its advantage over the midline epizotomy or the most important advantage by the way. However, midline epizotomy has another advantage being more easy to be repaired and the less pain and the more cosmetic and less blood loss however here we are talking about the mediolateral episiotomy mediolateral episiotomy avoiding the extension to the anal sphincter so has a fewer third degree extension the question may come like that and this distractor may be injury to the anal sphincter instead of this word okay what is laceration involving the vaginal mucosa, scan, perineal body, external anal sphincter, cold? Okay, here there is a laceration involving vaginal mucosa, scan, perineal body, and the external anal sphincter. What is laceration called? First degree tear, second degree, third degree or fourth degree of course it is third degree because it is reached it reached the external inner sphincter if it reached inner sphincter and the anal canal it will be a fourth degree okay don't be confused about this so the most the the first response here this question is third degree let us go to the next question. When performing clinical pulpometry in a gynecoid pelvis, the diagonal conjugate should be at least how many centimeters? 7.5, 9.5, 11.5, or 15.5? What is the best one response? The answer will be 11.5 let us explain why 11.5 we know that the diagonal conjugate around 12.5 okay so we are talking about the least the least diameter in gynecoid pelvis okay so should be near to 12.5 or 12 centimeter so which number here near to 12 centimeter is 11.5 if this diameter decrease more it will be contracted pelvis like 9.5 and 7.5 this is contracted pelvis markedly reduce the anteroposterior pelvis so this is not the right answer because we are talking here about gynecoid pelvis the normal one okay okay also we we can't choose 13.5 and 15.5. Why? This large diameter, while we are talking about the least diameter of the diagonal conjugate. So we are talking about the least, the lowest, lower most acceptable diameter in gynecoid pelvis. So 
the one burst response will be 11.5 centimeter. Another question, the gradual decrease in fetal heart rate that coincides with the uterine contraction described, which of the following deceleration types? Late, variable, yearly, prolonged. What is the first one response? Early deceleration is the one first response. Why? Because early deceleration start with the uterine contraction and end with it. A while late contraction start with the peak of contraction and the extend after end of contraction. But here we are talking about deceleration occurred with the uterine contraction and end with it. So this is the early one. And this is caused by head compression during fetal head descent in the pelvis during labor. So it is normal and physiologic. Okay? Why late this the late deceleration is a sign of fetal distress. Prolonged deceleration also is a sign of fetal distress. Variable deceleration sometimes indicating fetal distress and the variable deceleration is due to core decompression while the late deceleration is due to asphyxia or placental insufficiency and fetal distress another question is a 23 year old malibrous RH negative patient, 37 weeks gestation, undergoes an external cephalic version for breach presentation. Okay. Which of the following should be given? Nefidibam, magnesium, oxytocin, anti-D immunoglobulin. Remember, she is not liberous, so this is the first. RH negative, and there is obstetric maneuver done, which is external cephalic version, because she is presented with breach, the baby presented with, as a breach, so we are trying to do external cephalic version. And the patient is RH negative. What is the medication needed to be given? The anti D immunoglobulin. Yes, the anti RH antibody. Okay, anti RH immunoglobulin or anti D immunoglobulin should be given with, with this maneuver in RH negative wound. Okay, let us go to the next question. Which of the following conditions may be prevented by preconception folic acid supplementation? Cleft lip, your genital defects, fragile X syndrome, neural tube defect. This is a very easy question, and the guidelines document giving folic acid for prevention of neural tube defect, preconception. So the the one best response here is neural tube defect. Okay. This is the last question. Thank you. I'm Dr. Alam Musbah, Professor of Obstetrics and Gynecology, Faculty of Medicine, Mansoura University.